Hello and good morning YouTube reseller mom here. Welcome to today's video. Today's going to be a very quick video. I just wanted to show you how I process my clothing items that need to have pictures taken with the help of some teenagers. So I have two teenagers working for me right now. One is my son and another one is a family friend who we've known since she was very very tiny. So it's been fun having them package things up for me, but outsourcing certain things has allowed me to focus on uh, other aspects of my business to help it grow, <laughs> and they have been doing an amazing job. So I wanted to show kind of just the process. Now, like many things in life, this is not the end-all be-all of how you can do things. You can just take the generalization of what I'm showing you and then maybe a different workflow works for you and sometimes different ones work for me as well. This one is specific to bras that need to have um, like the tags photographed and such. So when I do my Kohl's bras it's a little bit different because I need to have the heat gun to remove the Kohl's clearance stickers and so it's a slightly different process but what I'm getting at is you can adapt this to whatever you're doing. So starting off here, I've got my bag full of bras. I use these giant reusable bags. I love them. I have tons in my car, but I keep them clean and they are excellent for hauling any mu pretty much anything from a retail arbitrage trip. They are great for heavy items. They are great for clothes. They're great for bulky items. They fit nicely into the grocery carts. They're 99 cents. They're very affordable. So I love these bags. I use them for all sorts of good things. So I've got my bag full of bras, and the first thing I do is I get uh, get them out and I take a picture of the Marshalls tag with the UPC, and I've shown that in past videos. Um, I couldn't figure out how to edit out the private information for this batch, so uh, just imagine, if you will, the UPC code and the Marshalls tag taken in the same picture. It's There's really nothing more to it. Don't overcomplicate clothes. A lot of people are taken back by clothes, myself included, when I first started, because it seems very, um, I don't know, it just seems like it's a different different thing and, and uh, can be intimidating, I guess is the right word. Okay, so as I, I go ahead and I take a bra out, I take a picture of the tag, and then I actually in this case I brought them over here to my chair and then I'm going to input them into the system so this is my desk it's a mess that's okay I know what's going on <laughs> so I bring them over here onto my chair and after I've taken the photograph of them what I'm going to do is this is inventory lab right here on the computer screen this is my Shopify store over here but inventory lab over here and I hit the scan to pack button and as I scan the barcode right here with my little table scanner it will add it to the shipment and spit me out a tag now in theory it's great and all these will fit into the box that I'm I'm doing on it's not that hard to change it from box to box but what I want to do is make sure that whatever the UPC code it is matching up exactly with the tag that's going to go on the outside of the bag I do you do not want to eyeball this and playing matchmaker is is daunting especially with clothing where you could have a lot of bras look very similar and there's minute differences and unless if you match up that UPC code you're gonna make mistakes it's just human nature trust the computer trust the UPC codes you want to match it up exactly so as I scan the bra it's gonna give me two different beeps uh, a good beep and a bad beep a good beep means it's in the system and it's in that shipment and it will spit me out a barcode or I mean a UP, um, an FBA label if it's a good beep and that's in your printer settings so you can go to inventory lab look at your printer settings and you can have it print a barcode after you scan to pack. There's a couple different options for when, when Inventory Lab will print. Uh, I play around with those depending on how I'm packing things up. So this is just how I do bras, different things, different settings, right? Okay, so it's going to give me a good beep. It's gonna give me a barcode. These are 10 by 13 poly bags. I take the bra, I take the label, I stick the whole thing in a poly bag. It goes into the box to be packaged up by my helpers. Now, when I first started doing this, I was like, I'm going to match it up with the right size bag, right? I'm, I'm, I just, 
you know, us entrepreneurs may have a little bit of a control problem in life. I don't know if you've noticed, but uh, giving up control is one of those things that's really hard to do. But as you branch and bring help to your business, you need to roll with it. So I put everything in the 10 by 13 and then I give my helpers other bag sizes uh, varying between 6 by 9, 8 by 12, 9 by 12, 10 by 13, and 11 by 14 poly bags out there. And I tell them, you know, I, I have very specific instructions, which maybe I can share with you. We'll see if I can bring them up here. But uh, if the bra could use a smaller bag size, they have them available when they go to pack them. But for scanning purposes, I want to get these matched up and do the work that they can't do as efficiently as possible. And then, you know what, they can, they can uh, decide what bag goes into in its final destination. All right, so into the bag, the bra, and the FBA label. I just tear it right off, right off of the Dymo. That's a Dymo 450 label maker. And I also run a Dymo XL, 4XL, for my, sh my shipping labels. All right, but it's on the other side of the desk over here. I was just bringing it up because I do have two Dymos that I talk about frequently. So bra, label, into box. These are all going to SMF. It's now pegged in that shipment, and I have record of it. If I need to redo these or whatnot, once they're packed up, you can use that barcode to scan to pack or assign to different things, etc. You can manipulate, or not manipulate, but move your items in your shipment around should not everything fit into one box or you need to repack things. Don't worry about that is what I'm getting at. All right. So the other thing that can happen is it gives you a want want noise. Um, I don't know how to describe the little beeping that it does, but a beep that describes it as not going into the shipment. Now, when I have a bunch of clothes, they typically get sent to about two or three locations. It depends if I have shoes in there or not. And in this case, I did have shoes. I went to Marshalls and Kohl's. I did get some sandals. I got some Robies. Um, and those go into different shipments as well. So as I am, if I get a bad beep, I just put them into another box. It's not shown here, but it's it's like in the office if it's not going into the shipment. And I work from shipments that have the most in them to the least for this part, just because I know most of them are going to be a good sign and go right into this box and only a handful the other way. So less scanning altogether. All right, let's see here. Where's the next picture? There we go. Uh, I did a close up of the box. I am using, this one's a Carson reused box from something that I ordered from Carson. You can use a whole bunch of different things to, to hold your items. You don't need any fancy containers. I often use boxes that had shipments come in. I have laundry baskets. I have those reusable bags. You don't need to run out and buy a whole bunch of fancy equipment for this job. Put your money where you need to, especially if you're just starting out with Amazon. I want to go through, I had talked at the store level about Schmutt. I'm going to call it Schmutt. I don't have a better name. At the store level, sometimes you get things and they may have a little dirt on them. And, and I'll call it Schmutt. A lot of times it looks like the hanger, when you have those wire hangers, the black stuff that accumulates the oxidation from the hangers and again I'll call it schmutt because I don't know what that oxidation is called but you can find it on clothes and right here you can see it just a little bit right there a little bit on this little leaf of a flower a little bit right there and when I'm packing up my clothes I go through them myself about three times and then of course my packers are going to look for anything like this too I tell them anything that's out of the ordinary that I may have missed you know, go ahead and flag me, stop, you know, stop bagging it, put it to the side or whatnot, and we'll address it as needed. With that being said, the most common things I see is this schmutt. I see snags, and uh, those are probably the two most common things I see. Every once in a while, there'll be something like a hole or something really weird that I missed, but those would be the two most common things. So for this kind of dirt, that's easy peasy to get rid of real quick. I use, this is just by chance, Huggies. I don't have an affiliation with Huggies or Pampers, but I do use fragrance-free. Uh, I do believe that 
fragrance free is kind of the best way to go with anything with clothes. I know I talked about, um, well, let's see here. In a general sense, I keep my office pretty darn clean. I try not to have any of my clothes ever touch any surfaces that my dogs would be at. Uh, like I said, they're always inside a box or a container of some sort to keep them away from things. I clean my tables uh, a little too OCD like I clean them at least once a day and in between batches and stuff but you know you want to keep anything you're going to resell kind of free of any other fragrances and this could be what you consider good fragrances or bad fragrances. I if I were a smoker I would smoke outside of wherever my FBA area is I don't wear strong perfumes or scents. I don't spray the room down with any sort of fabric-y stuff, uh, Febreze and whatnot. And I don't really spray any of my new clothes with anything. I don't practice any of that. Now, when I am doing eBay stuff, or if you are cleaning products from the bins or whatnot, or reused clothes, I do also suggest um, you know, less fragrance is the better. What smells good to you may not smell good to somebody else. Okay, that was enough of the sidebar. Sorry. <laughs> not everybody likes the same smells is what the short answer of that long rant would be. So I've got these Huggies fragrance-free wipes and you just wipe off and you can tell the smut is all gone. It was like right here. It was right, boom, there. It's gone. Can't even see it. Now, I like to look these over before I take the tags off because if it doesn't come off or it's a flaw I can't fix, then it can go right back to the wherever the heck I got it. Um, so I look over my products, you know, as I'm picking them out, I look them over when I'm putting them up on the counter to be scanned at the store, and then I look them over again at this point, and then my helpers are going to look over them again, but by that point, really, they should not be finding much of anything, right? Oh, um, I was going to say something else about that, now I can't remember, so we're going to just move on. This is out in my garage. I have some of these big eight foot tables and I'm just lining up things. You can see this is my Charmin bathroom order. We get these delivered um, in our monthly Amazon deliveries. So I just use these boxes to hold things too. And they've got all the bras ready to go here. Now with clothes that you fold up, um, I do like to make sure that they, I kind of handle them the same way, but I process them right before they go to my packers so that I'm not wadding them up and them sitting wrinkly into the bags. With bras, you don't they're not really going to wrinkle up inside the bags here, but with other clothes, they might be something that if you wadded it up and put it in the bag that they would get all wrinkly. So for pants and shirts and stuff, I'm going to process them right before my people pack them up. Now there was something I was going to show you. Let me see if I can find it here and I'll be right back. I wanted to share with you guys the tagging gun. I bought one that's red but here's a purple one. I've got it linked down in my Amazon store too. I think I linked this one but if it's not this exact one that's okay you guys can tell. Just type in whatever price gun and you want to look for one that has some needles and it comes with the barbs. Now, I think I got one with either a thousand or two thousand barbs. I don't think I've even gone through one, one pack of these guys, but this is probably one of the best things to get if you're going to get into clothes. It's 10 bucks and allows you to re-tag any sort of clothing. And I have had items where you know, I don't notice a defect or a flaw with the item and I need to reattach the Marshall's tag or um, Cole's tag or what, not Cole's tag, but Marshall's tag and Ross tag. I've also had times where both myself and my packers have snipped off the, the uh, manufacturer's tag, you know, so it happens but for $10, you can reattach it. It does not take long. This was the most simplest thing to use. It was a little daunting at first because I'm, I'm, I'd never worked retail. And so I was not familiar with how to work these guys very well. But, you know, I think a simple YouTube video or just looking at the instructions, it was super easy. So if you're going to get into clothes, 
the price tag on clothes is usually, let's see here, I buy clothes mostly between $5 upwards of $25 a piece of clothing. And I'm selling them from anywhere, you know, $15 on upwards to $80, $90, sometimes $100. So really, if you use this thing twice a year, it's going to pay for itself because you don't want to try and return something or be out of an item just because you can't reattach the tag. This is this is definitely a must if you are going to get into any sort of clothing. Um, that is all I have for right now. Oh, hold on, I'll show you the heat gun I just bought. It is working amazing. Okay, last, last thing I'll show you. This is my new toy. I just got it September 8th, so really, really new. $15, and it is definitely better than my hair dryer. I've been using my hair dryer for years, just got a new hair dryer, and it's great, you know, it's good, but somebody on either Facebook or Instagram told me that I really should get a one of these heat guns for shrink wrap and stuff, and it works really good, and it's only 15 bucks, so I will add this to my Amazon store as well down below if you are looking to pick it up. For $15, it's it's great. I mean, it's it's one of those things that you can add to your tool department and it will help you in so many ways. So the first way is it takes off TJ Maxx stickers off of things really well. It also takes off the coal clearance tags really well. And anything, especially makeup, makeup is what I mostly heat shrink, um, it does really good. Now it will, it does get really hot. So I have had a few trials where we've uh, melted the the shrink wrap so you got to be aware from that but just play with it once you get a hang of it you it goes a lot faster so my helper that has been working for me when she had to do about I don't know 10 makeups or so she used this and it was infinite you know it saved it cut the time at least in half if not more for processing those so definitely worth it all right, guys, that's all I'm going to share with you today. I will talk to you again another day, and I hope you are having a wonderful day and week. Take care.